Hello SGD and this is Bulbeck. It's a Lantalian lost ancient high technology of the megalithic magician gods. The lost ancient high technology community just keep, it's been two decades now at least, three decades in the case of Graham Hancock, and they just keep recycling these same points. They've never said anything new, they've never advanced it, they've never corrected earlier things, and so it needs to be addressed once again. Now, um, first question, why are the unfinished stones at this angle? Here's, you think that's the stone of Janine, as it's called? Now, the reason why the stones are at this angle is because they had to be, and you get a bit of a hint why, underline the why. Now, let's look at it from the front. Now, you can see that portion where it's been undercut, we zoom in and well, the answer starts to appear. Highlight that and you can already maybe start to make it out. You look at it from the side. What you see is high quality limestone, low quality limestone and then another layer of high quality limestone. So the top and the bottom of the stone has already been cut. So it's a smart way to do it. And that's just the natural formation. That's just the way that the layers um, are there now. Originally they would have been horizontal but uh, they've moved on so you can follow the line you can also clearly see that crack which is there underneath now that's you can see that the stone itself is a quite a different composition and you can see the the cracks there that are forming these are one of the things uh, you know this is for mist like was this crack some sort of marker lost ancient high technology you look at it from the other side and again you can see where the crack or the natural strata, as they're called. Uh, geologists, there's probably a lot of better names for it, but there's a high quality limestone, low quality limestone, and then a high quality limestone piece underneath there again. Again, you can just see those lines clearly. Now, usually, well, it should be like this is how it usually forms, but uh, is it, uh, uplift and geological forces, I forget the term now. You can even see the different layers at an angle, but also this layer is eroding and that layer is eroding less. So there's layers of quality and that's what's happening here. So again, different layers with different quality. Let's say bad stone, which erodes easier than a high quality layer than bad stone above that. And that's just what's happening here at Baalbek. Now for, um, more info on that so we look at this particular this old picture and there we can already see at the rest of the quarry where we can see those marks so we extend those lines out and you can see let's go back now in the stone itself you can see there are layers there so there's good limestone above and then there's a bad layer in between there just extend the line out of it. it matches now we take it from a different angle the same thing again you can clearly see that the uh, layer between the stones extend that out you can see how it matches quite nicely um there was a, a channel who was a went on a hidden inca tour and um, um, he committed the cardinal sin of putting a square in the serapium and, and got uh, bullied and trolled and removed his video now I forget the name of that channel it was a couple of years ago he was also the one who pointed uh, this out there's an unspoken law you must never deviate from the from the narrative now same thing is going on there you can see it again the different layers of stone again good quality above and this is uh it was a cool website that had excellent pictures of a quarry and there on the side as well again you can see now that poor limestone you know with big clumpy rocky bits and then good high grade limestone above so that's that's what's happening there this is another photo of a quarry this is not an unfinished stone this is one of the rock faces which has been left and again you can just see how it matches the angle very nicely but uh, back to this picture another thing I noticed not a biggie but just uh, noticed Notice the condition of the stone there at the back as it was back in the day. Compare it to as it is now. And uh, so you know, people chipping away at it or whatever. Not a biggie, but just, uh, just to point that out. Okay, now back to the 
megalithic mystery of the magician gods of Atlantis. Now, uh, you can hear a lot. It's still, this is old talking points that so that people such as Graham Hancock, Brian Foster, uh, Bright Insight are still saying now. So it's not like I'm saying something they said years ago and have since corrected and make a point of saying. This is what they're still saying now. So how and you just you'll get it all over the comment thread. So um, you know how did they move it uphill, uphill, um, Graham Hancock? Well, to understand uphill, you have to understand lost ancient high technology. Um, their translation, so precise is imprecise, symmetrical is asymmetrical, flawless means machined, flawed means machined. An important one is steep mountainside equals gentle ramp. Okay, so now we need to put that into perspective because when a lost ancient high technologist says it's uphill, what they really mean is essentially across level land. Uphill is level, steep mountainside is gentle ramp. All right. Now, from that photo, what you can see in the back corner is the actual site itself. Temple of Jupiter, Temple of Bacchus. There we go. All right, now, here's an aerial view. So, uh, let's just get the arrows going so we see what we're looking at. And what we have down here are the one, two, three, the trilophons, the mystical, unexplained evidence of Atlantis um, technology. Uh, trilophons, you can you get the info on their dimensions. Now the stones look really, and they are really big, but they're quite thin. So they don't extend back. So they're quite thin from the side. Yeah. And that's where they are in relation to the Temple of Bacchus and the remaining columns of the Temple of Jupiter. They're sitting above it. All right, so if you'd really draw a line, so from there, the, tri you know, the trilophons in the base would be underneath those in the distance. All right, so let's do some fact check. Romans couldn't cut the blocks at Baalbek. Romans couldn't move the blocks at Baalbek. Uh, wooden rollers would be crushed under the weight of the stones. The stones at Baalbek were moved uphill. The Romans didn't leave stones unfinished. These are some of the uh, chestnuts that they keep bringing out all over the time. So the Romans could not cut the stones at Baalbek, that uh, pregnant mother. It's a limestone block. Nature's already cut the bottom and the top for you. So it's really, can you chisel out a trench of limestone? At that, well, with string lines and plumb lines and standard masonry equipment, like what is the issue? He says, you know, it's uh, ridiculous. If you can do a, a one meter by one meter block, you can do a two meter by two meter block. You're just cutting out the trench. Even if you had to do the top and the bottom, but you don't have to do it in this case. So it, this is just one of the silly ones. Um, despite the fact that Romans didn't have the physical or technological capability to move these stones. This is a Brian Foster or um, Bright Insight quote. Again, millions of views pushed by the algorithm and this stuff just keeps so... Uh, never been corrected, still goes out there and this is a common belief. Now, on top of your trilophons, and then there are seven stones underneath that are about 350 tonnes. So I'm just using some old pictures updated now. 800 tonne maximum, probably about 750 tonnes, and the stones there underneath 350 tonnes. Now, that would define all of the mega lifts around the place. So this is the um, Lateran obelisk, the one in Rome, 400 tonnes brought by the Romans from Egypt. And still, the Roman, this could not be Roman because the Romans could not cut out a block. The Romans could not move these blocks. Uh, well... The Romans 400 ton obelisk moved from Egypt across the Mediterranean to Rome, uh, depicted, talked about and that type of stuff. Now, so, well that's 400 tons and that's double, the trilophon is double the weight. So the Roman machines, the lifting towers to get the obelisks in place, well, you could just double them up. So, and those are really big and high because they're lifting a really high obelisk. A lifting tower like that, or a, a gantry crane, as they had in, back in the day, um, would be much shorter. So you wouldn't need this massive scaffold either. It would just have to be a little bit higher than those trilophons. And you wouldn't have to deadlift. Like you would never have to lift them entirely off the ground. You only have to lift one side just enough, just an inch, to get the rollers or the sled underneath. You lower that, then you lift the other edge get the rollers and sleds underneath. So it's not even necessary to have that capacity, 
but it was uh, available because it's you know you just make a bigger machine or get two of them like it's not an issue now again just like uh, lifting a couch is very heavy you know but lifting one edge is is quite easy so very simple principles very simple solutions they either they just don't they've never moved or lifted or done anything in their life or they well they make these like they're always looking for a problem to a simple solution this is the lost ancient high technology method so again those roman obelisks you know not just for instance uh, egyptians moved it a little bit down the nile the, you know, the romans took it all the way over there now so um now can just need to double up the equipment and you don't even need to lift the entire thing you just once you get it in on sleds or rollers you've just got to lift it an inch not even just to get the the wood from underneath so absolutely blake baseless ab, uh, nonsense to claim that the romans could not do it uh it's this is not forbidden esoteric knowledge in the illuminati vatican library this is freely uh, available and there are other examples in modern times where people have you know done this it's just a matter of upscaling oh and this is a Roman era temple. Now, again, one of the things they say, well, Baalbek, which is, it's, uh, oh, but Baalbek's so far away from Rome, like Rome's over here, but Baalbek's way, way. Well, again, the eastern part of the empire was the most civilized, developed part of, you know, of the uh, um, empire. And they built temples all, like Roman temples are not just in Rome, they're all over North Africa, all over, all around the Mediterranean, France and, and, and so forth. So that's again, one of these sort of baseless, silly, silly talking points. I'll link this in the description, Mystery of a Great Megalith, Spalbeck with our alien scientists against Smiths. They go through all the bits and pieces and, you know, like just uh, give you the historical evidence, physical evidence on site and, and just, again, tear apart this nonsense which is lost ancient high technology uh also world of antiquity has done a number of videos on these and what most importantly would be the one about the digs at Baalbek, the archaeology that's been done there and they've looked through and they've found so it's you know the if you want to say well the primitive is stone is below and the best is above well okay <laughs> live by your own rules um they've dug down there at Baalbek. so this is of roman era like rome was an empire of many nations and civilizations it wasn't just about the italians in rome it was a, a much bigger place it's like uh, saying that the english empire was only about you know people in england it was all uh, all these different people all of their different knowledge and so forth so uh, wooden rollers couldn't support the weight therefore lost ancient high technology again this is a nonsense you can just like get google what can wood support uh, old time shipbuilders you know used dunnage or you know timber like railway sleepers and supported that weight they still use that now on mega lifts mega lifts when they're moving big oil platforms and, and you just put some timber underneath um, again this is a one of these claims which is just silly like it's uh, how could you say it we're not even checking anyway um this is a clip um they moved a 250 ton stone you go well that's only 250 tons but the point is that along the length you have the timbers so the timbers are only supporting what's directly above the one at the front is not supporting the weight at the back so if it was a huge like really high stone which Baalbek or none of these stones are then there would be a lot of weight pushing down on the stone but if it's only uh, uh, you know, not very high it's only supporting that weight directly above so uh, wooden rollers or sleds would crush under the weight is just absurdity uh, again, you're starting to see a pattern because there is a pattern. They're always looking for problems to simple solutions. They're always stating f um, things as fact which are just factually incorrect and really easy to check. And over the 20 or 30 years at Hancock and this greater uh, lost ancient high technology magicians, uh, gods of the magic lost alien technology, still saying it, still repeating it. Um, another great one. Well, the Romans didn't leave unfinished blocks in their quarry, therefore it could not be Roman. Uh, well, ancient Roman quarry. Um, well, I'll back, but not only did they leave unfinished stones, they left unfinished columns. Which, you know, uh, and that's just one selection. So 
Yes, uh, basically everyone who's got a quarry has left unfinished stones in there. It's again, it's an absurdity to to say this. Uh, break it up into smaller pieces. That's even still you, you, you can still see it in big quarries now. They'll cut giant bulbic pregnant mother size blocks and then cut them up into smaller pieces after that. So pra standard practice back then, standard practice still now. Uh, you, you can't leave, again that goes to the Baalbek Museum, I just posted it last night, night before one about this, but uh, this is just silly again when they say it couldn't be lifted now, but, but what did I read? The heaviest, the, the strongest crane is 300 tonnes, not even close. Um, this is just silly misinformation and so easily fact-checked as well and that it persists is proof of, uh, of the misinfotainment which is ancient lost high technology. It's misinformation uh, actually probably is a disinformation because it's misinformation is disinformation I think is the worst one it's much more deliberate and you know misinformation is twisting things I think a little bit more disinformation is blatant lies and that's what this is uh, disinformation. Um, the stones at Baalbek were moved uphill so we go back to that original picture but here's the aerial view there's the temple complex itself now there's the um, temple of Bacchus and those large columns of from the temple of Jupiter and the trilophons are just there okay now so there we see um, well there's everything's location and that's where the uh, stones are I think actually I think I might have that backwards the pregnant mother is no no I think that's, that's right yes that's where the stones are that's where the final temple site is and they were pushed uphill again they emphasise this up, like, how could you do it uphill? It's really emphasised. It's not just like, oh, it's uphill, but, you know, not very much, but it's like uphill, oh, oh, impossible, with lost ancient high technology. Uh, go on to Google Earth, you can get the elevations. Um, there's older surveys that are being done to get the elevations. There's basically a very shallow valley floor here. Now, as the crow flies, so... The heaviest stones, the unfinished stones, which will never move, so they don't you know, really need to be described. It's only the trilophons at the temple itself. But uh, we have those elevations there, and they're 15 metres and 6 metres beneath the, where you need to deliver them to. Now, the quarry itself, again, is most of the quarry is much higher. They've moved a huge amount of stone out of here. So where exactly did those trilophons come from? I don't know, but it's, it's possible that they come from the higher part of the quarry. Since they were laid first, you'd sort of think, well, they probably come out there first. Not necessarily, because maybe, yeah, but let's assume that it's at the lowest. So let's assume that the trilophons come from where the uh, stone of a pregnant woman is or the stone of Janine. All right, so, well, okay. So most of the quarry is at so at 1149 meters is at or above the temple site itself if it come from the higher parts of the quarry but again let's assume it didn't now in a straight line it's a very short distance uh, one kilometer half a mile but where the road already is now follows the natural contours let's go back a bit all right, so the road that already exists, you know, follows and like goes, runs. So there's a valley running here between the two. The road that exists carries along, and then brings you to the temple. So the road is a very gentle ramp, not even a ramp. It's essentially flat. Now let's look at that. Okay, so. To bring it from there, just follow the natural contours, which is marked out by the modern road. And I wouldn't be surprised if that was like a Roman road that's been built over, but, well, you know, how are we going to get it across? Take it across the valley? Well, yeah, you could do that in a straight line, but much easier, a little bit longer, but let, a lot less work would be just follow the natural contours and bring it onto site. Um, Rome's were, Rome were fam famous for their surveying and their roads. It's, you know, a dinky little road of it. This would not even blink an eyelid to do this. Uh, hundreds of thousands of kilometres of quality Roman roads were made. Um, you know, for instance, at the uh, siege of Masada, they built a giant ramp up there during the um, 
uh, revolt there in uh, Jerusalem. Okay, so we have where it comes from. And again, let's assume that the trilophons come right from there at the lowest point of a quarry. At a, just over 1,100 metres is the, would be the total distance. And so you take the elevations. Now, the ramp, the uphill, if it come from the lowest part of a quarry, would be less than one degree, maybe 1.2 degrees at, at the very, very maximum. So that yellow part is, that's actually not the ramp. I've exaggerated that. The, the uphill is, now that's exaggerated of what they're claiming the uphill part is. If you were to draw it in that same, would, would appear as a flat line. You couldn't tell the difference. So if a trilophon's removed from that location, the low point of a quarry, then yes, technically they were moved uphill. Okay, you could say, okay, well, it's not a lie because technically it is uphill. Um, technically, the salt flats are not actually flat, you know, but, but we don't call them the salt, the Utah salt uphills because it's the, the grade is so n low as to n n not even be worth mentioning. Uh, another way to look at it is that your standard street or road is always a little bit higher in the centre than what is at the edge, so the water runs off into the gutters. I wouldn't say crossing the street is halfway uphill and then halfway downhill, it's essentially flat. And the grade here that you'll see on your normal road is more than what the uphill of the Baalbek one is. Same again, would you call us, would you say a soccer field is, you know, uphill to walk to the centre? Because the centre is always going to be a little bit higher for the runoff. You wouldn't call it that, it'd be deceptive to call it that. But um, back to uh, Graham Hancock, who really popularised this um, in his books, and he's still, again, he, he hasn't reversed. You know, he said, oh, well, actually, we've learned a lot since then. And like serapine boxes, not really hard to get in there. And it's like, it's not really, you know, well, we've, no, they're still saying this after decades. And that gives them away. Um, you know, famous Joe Rogan interview, you have a basic law of physics. You know, a ramp must be, low, be below 10 degrees to, to move heavy blocks up there. Now, that's just not true on its own. But let's live by his rules that he set. And so this is much less than 10 degrees. And so even lost ancient high technologists agree that this is, <laughs> this is not a problem. This is a problem with, when you set up BS that uh, people are going to go, okay, I accept your BS and throw it, you know, well, what about it? So uh, this is just not a problem, not a problem. So welcome to Lost Ancient High Technology, the show where everything is made up and the talking points are too. Every step of the way, whether it's the uh, pyramids, the Serapium, Baalbek, uh, every site that they go to, they're always setting up these same impossible, the same talking points, the same, you, you can't cut, you can't cut it, you can't lift it, you can't do it. Oh, you go, the wood would collapse, oh, you need steel roll, etc. Nah, this is how they um, operate and they refuse to change, which is the giveaway that they're, that they're grifters, they're scammers. Um, and the reason that they have to suppress and censor and not address and um, answer to if they ask questions and you give them answers and then they pretend it didn't happen maybe shift the narrative in their next video and just like Baalbek then six months later they're saying the same nonsense again lost ancient high technology is uh, disinfotainment uh, because it's also dumbing people down stealing away our birthright if I'll yeah, there's no, there's nothing good. There's no defence for it anymore because it's been going on so long. They keep repeating it. They know better. They're intentionally spreading untruths. That's the lost ancient high technology standard operating procedure. With that, SGD, have a good one. Till next time.